In our last video, I spoke about how to recognize the type of conic sections based on the general equation. But there are degenerate cases. And in order for us to fully see that it is a degenerate case, from the general form, we will have to write it again in the standard form. So what are the degenerate cases for our conic sections? A point is a, is a degenerate case. You can look at a point as the degenerate case of a circle or an ellipse. Let's say, for example, this is our ordinary regular circle with center C and radius 2. What if, what if the circle has a center but has no radius? Okay, so it becomes just a point. A line is a degenerate case. We can look at it as a degenerate case of a parabola. So a parabola has a latus rectum. A latus rectum is a measure of the focal width of your parabola. So a short latus rectum means a narrow parabola. A long latus rectum means a wide parabola. So what if, what if the latus rectum of your parabola goes to infinity? It is so long it is infinity. In which case, your parabola becomes a line. A flat parabola or just simply a flat line. Two intersecting lines would be the degenerate case of a hyperbola. So this is our regular hyperbola. What if the vertices of our hyperbola coincide with each other? So how can we tell if a conic section is a point? Well, something like this can happen. We are given a general equation. We write it in standard form and we came up with something like this. Ordinarily, if this were a circle, your radius here shouldn't be zero. It's the same with your ellipse. The constant term here ought to be one if this is a regular ellipse. So when these equations become zero, so that means this is a point. Why? Because this one will become zero if x is equal to h and y is equal to k. For example, this one is zero, so that means this one plus that one is zero, so this one is zero, and that can only happen when x is 5. This can be zero only when y is 1. And so that's a pair of coordinates for your point, 5, 1. It's the same with your ellipse. Again, if this were a regular ellipse, our constant term here should be 1. But when it is zero, that means this is zero, this is zero. And that can only be 0 when x is negative 5 and when y is 8. Well, it is easy to tell if an equation is an equation of a line. It becomes a degree 1 equation. So this one is a, an equation for your line. Two intersecting lines. Again, your uh, degree 2 equation will yield two intersecting lines if, when writing it in standard form, led us to this. So this is going to be a degenerate case for your hyperbola. So this one is when your uh, principal axis is horizontal. This is when your principal axis or transverse axis is vertical. If this is a pair of two intersecting lines, then what are their equations? So this is what we shall do. So let's say, for example, this is our uh, degenerate hyperbola. We are given its equation in standard form. So in order for us to get the equation, okay, so we, we will separate the terms. And then we will solve for y minus 2. We will isolate y minus 2. How do we do that? Well, transposition. We will get the square root. But obtaining the square root of y minus 2 squared and obtaining the square root of this term will give you plus or minus. Okay, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. 
and your square root will cancel the power of x minus 1. So this one is already your equation for your two intersecting lines. One equation, y minus 2 is equal to positive 2 thirds times x minus 1. And the other one is y minus 2. y minus 2 is equal to negative 2 thirds times x minus 1. This equation is actually an equation of a line that is written in point-slope form. Can you still recall your equation of a line in point-slope form? So these two lines passes through an intersection. That intersection has coordinates 1, 2. And this line has a slope. One line has the slope of 2 over 3 and the other one has the slope of negative 2 over 3. So using your point slope form for equation of a line, this is how you write the equation of your line. So in this case, the slopes are 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds. And the point that we are talking about here is HK. This is your H and that is your K. Reduce x squared minus 4y squared minus 2x plus 24y minus 35 is equal to 0 to standard form. Sketch the graph. Well, by looking at it, it just looks like this equation, this equation ought to be the equation of a hyperbola. Uh, the coefficients of x squared and y squared are not equal and uh, they carry different signs. Okay, so that is our guide for telling if an equation is one for a hyperbola. So this one looks like a, an equation for a hyperbola. Okay, so what we do is we reduce it to standard form. And let's see what's going to happen. So we shall do completing the square. We can now write this as the square of x minus 1. And this one is going to be the square of y minus 3. This is not yet in the standard form because the coefficients of our terms here uh, should be equal to 1. Okay, so we will divide everything by 4. Dividing everything by 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1. Okay, and so 0 divided by 4 is 0. So this now is your equation in standard form. Obviously, this is a degenerate case of a hyperbola because if this were a regular hyperbola, this one should be equal to 1. Okay, so if this were a degenerate case of a hyperbola and we know it to be a pair of intersecting lines, what are the equations of these two intersecting lines? Well, as usual, we separate the two terms and we solve for y minus 3. How do we do that? Well, we get the square roots. The square root of of this one is going to be plus or minus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. So these are the equations of our two intersecting lines. One line is y, y minus 3 is equal to 1 half times x minus 1. The other one is y minus 3 times, no, y minus 3 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 1. Let us now sketch these two intersecting lines. We shall begin with the point of intersection, 1, 3. Okay, 1, 3. H, K. How do you sketch the line given this pair of equations? So pay attention to this. This is your slope. Change in Y over change in X. So let us first graph the one with a positive slope. Okay, change in Y is 1. Change in X is 2. Positive, so that means our line slopes upward. Okay, change in y, 1. Change in x, 1, 2. So that is one point. And you draw a line through those two points. So that is one line. How about the other line? Negative 1 half times x minus 1. Or y minus 3 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 1. So negative. So you will count 1, change in y over change in x, but you go down, change in y, 1, or negative 1, change in x, 1, 2. You write your point there, and you trace a line. So this is the pair of two intersecting lines 
which is the degenerate case for our hyperbola. 